So what does it mean for a Christian to produce fruit? What does it mean? What does it mean? I'm asking you. What does it mean for a Christian to produce fruit? Does that mean that they're nice to their neighbor? Well, that's probably helpful. You know, um, I think if you're not nice to your neighbor, um, you're, that's probably a pretty good sign that you're not mature. But what is the sign? I mean, I've already given you the example. So, so tell me plainly, what is it? Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that you answered that way. And you want to know why? Because I'm going to call you on it. And I'm going to say, I don't agree. I, in fact, I pretty strongly disagree. I do this with my dad often, and, and I don't know if he takes it personally. You're a very, very good friend of mine. I love you. You know I would step in front of the bus for you or your wife or your kids. Uh, but I don't think that is the case. Um, and I'll tell you why that is the case. We gave two examples at the end of the sermon on Sunday, this past Sunday, of what maturity looks like. And do you remember what, that mature, what those two things were? I said that there's two, but in reality, there's really three. So there's your other hint. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller, you make me feel like I'm not doing a very good job being a pastor, but that's okay. I'm sure it's much more my fault than it is your fault. Here it is. Number one. God calls us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. If we are doing that, and of course I, I keep adding that I add strength uh, to that, but it says strength elsewhere, so I don't feel bad adding that. Loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and added strength. I think that is a clear sign of maturity. Also, when you are able to love your neighbor as you love yourself. <laughs> Okay, that's a lot harder. I love my neighbors. I don't know if I'm as attentive to my neighbors as I'm as attentive to myself. But I do think that I love my neighbors. So I think there is maturity that's taking place there. Have I arrived yet? No. Is my life free of sin? I like it better said this way. Is my life free of shortcoming? Because sin is an archery term that simply means the archer pulls back his arrow with his bow, lets the arrow fly, and it falls short of the target. That is a literal, literal definition of sin. Perfectly, literally it. So um, am I getting closer to the target as I age? I think so. Am I hitting the target? I still think often I fall short. But I think we're moving towards maturity there. But then there is not just only the great commandment, which is made up of two parts, loving the Lord your God, loving your neighbor. There's also the great commission. How are you doing on the great commission? Because I think that there are tons and tons and tons of people that say, oh, I am very mature. I'm very mature. I, I've been going to church all my life, and I, can, I could teach classes on the Bible. I could do this. I could do that. All of these kinds of things. And to that, I simply ask, tell me who the Lord has, has, has how, who, uh, tell me who the Lord has allowed you and used you to bring to him oh that's not a fair question pastor jeff because peter watered and 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 so and so added fertilizer and you know i'll i can make a gross joke but i won't right um and so and so cultivated and all kinds of different things like that but you know the, you know it takes multiple people to to do those things okay well who has the lord used to, to use you to bring across that finish line. You go out there and you look at those trees. Last year there were eight, ten apples. Not very healthy. Do you know what we ended up doing? The exact same thing that the Bible says you're to do. We pruned a little. We dug up the soil. We cultivated, we watered, and we fertilized. All of those different kinds of things. Did it pay off? 
It did. Instead of eight to 10 apples, do you want to guess how many apples are out there? I kid you not. There's over, there's a probably a couple of hundred on every single one of those apple trees out there. It's not a one and done. It's a multiplying. Okay? I think those are the best examples. Now, to your statement. I agree with you in part. Absolutely, I do. Because the thing is, is if you don't have the fruits of the Spirit in you, and if you're not, you know, I mean, it's, it's not through your labor. And I, I hate this because there's so many people, they just depend on their own, their own abilities. And the more earthly successful people are, the harder it seems often that they are being used. Because I quite frankly, think that they, most people that seem to have a lot of earthly success seem to want to tend to rely on their own gifts and talents. I'm sorry, but Melody can sing as lovely as can be, and she can give you all kinds of sugar, goosey bumps, and everything else, and make you go, wow, wow, wow. And, you know, um, and her husband can bring a message that will make you go, wow, I hadn't heard that perspective, and he's not Pastor Jeff. And, and I kind of like, you know, hearing other people than Pastor Jeff all the time, and wow, that was really, really good as well. And, and this is all great, good, and fine. That is all absolutely great, good, and fine. And the truth is, is I think we should work hard to bring good messages. I think we should work hard to be able to sing well. We bring our, our, our gifts and our talents to the Lord. We hone them. We use them for him. And we pray that he would come and bless them. But I think so often we do revert to our, our own strengths and instead of, you know, relying on him. Now let me say one more thing. I have never seen a two-year-old apple tree bear fruit. Maturity needs to come first. And that's not to say that God won't use you, because you know what? God used Nebuchadnezzar, and he was as big of a rascal as there could be. All right? I could give you other names, and we could talk about those different kinds of people. Absolutely, he can use different kinds of people. Absolutely. But we're talking about the kind of bearing fruit as described in the Bible. He was given one talent. He went out. He gained three more. He was given five talents. I've doubled it. Here are now ten. That was one season. That was one season. Now, I tell you what, I would say if in a lifetime you were able to bring five people to the Lord and help them and disciple them and all of those kinds of things, that's all great and fine. And you can push back and I will welcome the pushback. I really will. But what I'm saying to you isn't an opinion and it's not just showing you a belly button. And you all can share belly buttons and, and stuff if you want to tell me some scripture, I would love that more. But I'll listen to, and, and look at your belly buttons if you would like. I, I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. Some people have very, very nice belly buttons, right? Yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Did you hear what he said? Carl said, well, I haven't seen my belly button in years. Dad, you want to say something? So, so let me let me let me jump in here. I don't like what you're saying. I, I just don't. I just don't. And the reason why I say that is like I can give you examples. I can give you examples. Um, 
I had to humble myself and I almost missed an opportunity of the lifetime, of a lifetime that is multiplying uh, exponentially right now. And that's how I, I truly believe that it is real, true, and authentic. For example, um, Amy and I were dating. We were um, at a church plant in Greenwood. And I wasn't making money and was going broke and ended up having to roof houses. And while I was roofing our house um, and a friend of mine was helping me, uh, tear off the shingles. Uh, he said, Jeff, have you seen these kids down there running around? I'm like, yes. He says, they're messing with us. I'm like, friend, they're little kids. Let them do their messing and you do your work and we'll all be fine. And he left and a couple of hours later, um, there was egg all over. You remember that little Toyota pickup truck? And the funny thing is I just had it painted. Um, an egg on a freshly painted truck will cause that to just peel right off. And I just wanted like crazy just to wring their necks because that's what we do. We get frustrated. We get upset. And I just wanted to wring their necks. These are bad kids in a bad world. So what did I do? I went and I knocked on the door because I saw them go in and out of the house. I knew there had to be at least some relation. No one answered, but I heard scurrying. A little bit later, I saw a car pull up and two older folks come out. I went down off the ladder. I knocked on the door and I rang the doorbell and I said, you have two young boys here. And he said, what did they do? And I said, well, I'm roofing the house right behind you and let me show you. Well, hold on a minute. Let me go and grab them. And whatever they've done, I'm okay with you doing. You can, I will pull their britches down and you can beat them. She literally said this to me. You can take a switch and beat them as many times as you would like. I said, well, you can go get the boys. That's fine. But then we'll, we'll walk out. Boys, boys. And here come Darren and Kenny walking up the steps. And we showed them the, the truck, and I said, guys, I'm leaving right now to go to Mike's car wash, crew car wash, excuse me. No, it was Mike's car wash, wasn't it? To Mike's car wash to try to get the egg off my truck. Egg has this in it, and it'll often cause, you know, paint to peel. My car, my truck was painted two weeks ago. I, I'm afraid he may have done about $1,000 worth of damage to it. They're like crying at this point. They're just begging for mercy. And I said, guys, tomorrow morning, I want you here at the house at 5 a.m. ready to go. What are we going to do? I says, I'm going to work you. I said, every single leaf on this lady's five acres is going to be raked up, swept up, bagged, and, 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 and thrown away. And they worked forever and ever and ever. And I still wasn't happy. I was still mad. The paint didn't come off. It looked good. I wasn't sure if it would later or whatever. But about four days after that, the Lord said something to me. And he said, Jeff, he said, I want you to go down. I want you to go find the boys. And I want you to tell them about me. I want you to do that. And I'm thinking, okay, and I'm just feeling guilty because I worked them like a bunch of Hebrew slaves. But I went down, and I talked to them, and I invited them to, to, to come to church. I said, guys, we we're, have a church here, and I live here, and I drive right through here. I'll come and pick you up. Really? You would come and pick us up? And the next thing I know is they come, and um, three weeks later, Amy and I are praying with them, and they're accepting Jesus in their life. They knew nothing about Jesus or the church, absolutely nothing. Now, what really happened after that? Well, I don't know. Amy and I in the church, we stayed there for nine months, and we asked the Lord to use us. Dad, I do not disagree with you one iota. It's not us. It's the Holy Spirit doing that. But the Holy Spirit is pleased to use different ones, different ones who I think are, are willing and obedient and are mature. And... So we ended up leaving. Um, we ended up going to Olney, Illinois. And about four years later, um, mom says, Jeff, you'll never believe, but Kenny, uh, no, I'm sorry, Darren, 
came to the house and he wants you to call him. And I called him, hey, I'm graduating from high school. I'm, I'm on a ministry track. Um, I have a girlfriend who's a Christian. I'm really plugged into an awesome church. Good, Darren, that's awesome. Tell me about Kenny. Kenny decided to play football and he hung around boys that, um, that just didn't love the Lord and he's just falling away. And I tried like crazy to talk to him and win him to the Lord like crazy. Today, he's still doing youth pastor ministry work and he's winning dozens upon dozens upon dozens of people to the Lord all the time. Now, is that a, is that a once in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a long time sort of a thing happening? No, no, I mean, it's not. And dad, I'm not saying that you've not had your successes. You have had your successes. You had your successes with uh, Fabio or Pedro. And I think that's absolutely amazing and magnificent and fantastic. But what I am saying is this. The Lord is pleased to, who, to, to give um, who he chooses to give. One talent, three talents, and five talents. What are you going to do with your talents? And why is it that he's more pleased to give some five than to some three? Now, again, I would love to hear scripture on it. I would love to hear scripture. We can talk about ifs and buts and coconuts all day long. But I would love to hear what the Bible says because you can go through the gospel of John and you can go through the letters of John and you will find verse after verse after verse that supports the things that we're saying. We are called to go and to live mature lives, to love the Lord, to love others, and to bear what kind of fruit? What kind of fruit are we to bear? Much. Much. Yes, sir. If we went back to that illustration, 101, 201, 301, we would say, well, that's a kind of a 301. So you, you, you might say they're more mature, but go ahead, your point. How do we cultivate it? Yeah. How? Is, is that, it may be bearing fruit, and we may be acting, and we may show that we have all this fruit and all these gifts and everything, and we're showing it. But what are we on the inside? What's our foundation? And, and I don't know what those apple tree foundations are. Is that good wind comes through? Is it going to not? Well, and it's, it's interesting because... I got to tell you, I had people swear to me, Jeff, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. There's a clay pot out there, and there is. In fact, I thought it was like eight inches, but when we went out there and we put in the thing, we found it's 22 inches, 22 inches. And so what we ended up doing was when I had opportunity to bring a backhoe in, we brought in a backhoe. Do you remember that, Randy? We redug those things, we replanted them, and we put in a ton of really, really good soil around it. And that made a big difference. But I love your point. The, the, the question is this. Okay, maybe I'm not the person who first introduced it. Maybe they did go to a, a youth breaking away those of you that that are familiar you know or uh, a youth event or they went to church camp or or whatever else and and god got them to a certain place and then we show up and we're digging and cultivating the soil and that's what we do and maybe we'll see it maybe we won't but i really really doubt that every you know well i'm just the seed planter or, oh, I'm just the water person. Oh, I'm just, you know, is, is that your gift? Or to some people, are you going to plant the seed? And some people, you're going to water. And some people, you're going to cultivate. And are some people, you're going to bring, uh, Amy questioned Samuel Schumacher. Um, anyone remember Samuel Schumacher? No, you don't remember that either? Um, that's okay. That's my bad. That's more on me than you. Um, um, Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, I stand by the door and knock. And I was talking about that. We were back un un opening up boxes and taking books out. And she saw the book. And she opened up and she started reading it. Oh, wow, he really was like AA guy, wasn't he? He says, yeah, he's the unspoken hero. 
I mean, he just really, really is. But what I really, really love is, you know, he says, hey, I stand by the door, you know, and I, I try to find these groping hands that are out there that are in the dark, blind, that can't see anything, and try to help them get their hands onto that latch so that it opens up. Guys, listen, here's, here's, here's the thing. You're not going to produce fruit just by being, being nice. You're not going to produce fruit just by, by going and saying, well, I'm going to set a really good example. Okay. Um, is that what Jesus did? No. No. That's exactly right. I mean, if you're not saying, hey, I would love to bring you to, to, to church with me. I would love to tell you about the reason for my faith. I, I, you know, it used to be 25, 30 years ago, people, that was a, just a, such an unbelievable turnoff. You, you wouldn't believe the statistics today that say that people will listen to you. If you were to go to a neighbor, if you were to go to a friend and you say, hey, listen, I would like to talk to you a little bit and just tell you about what is most important to me in my life. Now, does that sound hard? Does that sound frightening? Probably. Brett would not have a problem with doing that. But I'm going to tell you what, Dwayne Kissel would struggle, right? She just would. Um, Brett Stotts probably also wouldn't have that, that, you know, it might be a bit of a struggle for him to do that. But I could see him doing that. But I think it would probably be a little more challenging for Gary. I think, Louise, it would even be a little bit yet more challenging. So I do think people have different personalities and, and, and things. Kyle, if I could get Kyle out of his shyness and, and stuff like that, Kyle would be a Jesus-multiplying machine. I really think he would. But I get it. He is kind of shy and stuff, and I respect that. And God created him that way. And I'm not going to sit there and say, well, you should this and you should that or whatever else. And I do think sometimes God uses people who are more outgoing, maybe to get them across the line. Whereas maybe he uses people that are a little bit more kind of reserved and, and you know, like that a little bit. Maybe to, I don't know, I suspect. But I know that nothing is impossible with the Lord. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. But what I am saying to you, and I'm trying to say very, very plainly, and I, I just wish that you would just take this and, and, and just receive this. I've never had anyone come to me, never had, never had anyone ever come to me and say, you know what, I see something different about you. Can you tell me what it is that makes you unique and different than, than anyone and everyone else? Now, maybe you profess to be a Christian and they knew you were a Christian and then they said, you know what, he's not just, he's not just, he doesn't just say he's a Christian and then live this way. On, on the side, I see, you know, what's going on here, and I think there is something different and unique about him, and so maybe there is something about this Christ. Hey, Phil, why don't you tell me a little bit more about this Christ? But, again, I don't think that's going to happen, and I, I really, I, I don't think that's going to happen, you know, unless there is a, what makes me unique and different is Christ. What makes, yes, ma'am. You don't. I'll vouch. And she said to me the week I came back, how do you handle everything and still have a smile on your face? And I said, because Jesus So they do come to you based on your reaction. Yeah. And I had an opportunity to let her know why I was like that. Do you think that she had an idea that you were a person of faith before at all? Do you not think so? Yeah. 
And, 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 and that's kind of, yeah. Yes. And I think people know, and, and I'll, I'll even go a step further. I'll say that I think people know that people of faith have the right answers but they don't often want to sacrifice the things of the world. They're maybe waiting until a time in life when they're ready to sacrifice those things. And it can very much open up conversations. Yes. Uh, you're not going to hear me. You're not going to hear me sit or say, oh, don't, don't, just don't, don't worry about trying to be a good person. You're just wasting your time trying to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bite on that. There's no way I'm going to say that. Of course that, that's a, that's a, that's, that's 101. But I'm not talking about just 101. If you're remaining at just 101, I, I'm, I don't think you're going to be that effective. I think when, 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 when everything that's tested by fire is tested, and you'll see, and I think there's a lot of people that we invest into, and we invest to a degree. We invest to a degree, but I can't go so far because I don't want to offend them. I don't want to come across preachy, and I don't want to, I don't want to be misinterpreted, and, uh, misinterpreted. I don't want people to sit or think I'm like some Bible whacking crazy whatever else. And so I fall short. And, and so we leave them at a place where they're, we can bring them to maturity, but we only get them so far. And then we're like, yeah, well, look, look, we, we, we're, 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 we've done good. We've done good. Maybe somebody else will, will, will take off where I left off. And maybe someone will, maybe someone won't. Guys, my point is just very, very simply this. I'm asking you guys, I'm asking you guys, you know, who have you led to the Lord? And if you don't want to say, or maybe you feel like you can't say, well, I never brought someone across the finish line, but I've, I've been influential. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's a great place to start, isn't it? It's a great place to start. You say everybody in your office knows that you're a person of faith. Everybody in your office knows that you love Jesus. And then the, God used a horrible, horrible, horrible situation for good. And people saw a side of you that they kind of knew was there, but they didn't know the extent. And so they said, hey, is this this Jesus thing that, that gives you the strength that, that you have to, to be the kind of person that you are, even in one of these kinds of moments? I, I'm going to tell you, Bill Hostetter talked to people about Jesus all the time. All the time. And there was this unbelievable, beautiful, and they didn't read it, unfortunately, at, at his funeral. But um, Amy, I think, posted it, and it's, it's out there. But a, a fellow guy, you know, wrote these incredible things about Bill, who was not a believer, who became a believer. But they knew what it was about Bill that made the difference. I can guarantee you that the people that live around me know that I go to church. I know that they know that I spend a lot of time at church. They, you know, those kinds of things and stuff. These are all good, good kinds of things and stuff. Any other, I, you, I'll let you push back, but I'm, I'm just simply asking you, um, how do you know that we've reached maturity? And my answer, unequivocally, is going to be, we love the Lord, and it shows and we're not falling on our face habitually, you know, to sin. And we love our neighbors. Even when it means taking it on the chin to speak truth to a neighbor. And they may not respond to the way that you would want them to respond. But we still speak the truth and we try to speak the truth in love. I think that's important. And I think the third thing, and, and I think the ultimate sign, because the Bible talks about a tree that is mature, will, you will bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit. Millions of places, it seems. Not millions. 
dozens of places, Jesus says, you will bear much fruit. And what I'm asking is, um, are you seeing much fruit? And then what I'm saying is, is you're, if you are not, then I am glad that you are here. Because if you would like to hear, we'll look at passages in the scriptures that talk about it. I won't give you Bill Hybel's opinion or old boy down at Dallas, in Dallas, Texas. I won't, I won't tell you, you know, what, you know, the top 10 answers are on um, Family Feud. I will tell you and I will show you what the Bible says. If you want to hear it. I can't make you hear it. I can't. But if that's what you want, if that's what you desire, I am an idiot, messed up, dork of a fool. But I had a Savior, savior come to me and show me the way. And I can show you the way. If you want. If you're willing. Most people won't. Do you know why most people won't? You already know the answer. Why? No. 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 I don't like, I, I, I don't see the biblical part of that. Yeah. It's pride. It's always pride. It's the very, very first sin. It's pride. It's always pride. Yeah. And why? Why don't they want to give up the things that they want to do? Because it's fun. And I think I know better than what God knows. That's And when tested, they'll burn up like the chaff. And there'll be nothing to show for them at all. And that's where we spend 98.9, I don't know, I mean, I don't know, percent of our efforts. And I think we do that because we chase after those things because we are not mature. We don't want to hear those things. We use pride as the as the reason why you know, I know better and I'm going to do what I'm, you know, and, and all of these kinds of things. And I'll tell you what, he opposes and he doesn't, <laughs> he just doesn't. You and, well, Okay. So this is interesting. This is John chapter 12. And um, this is after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. This is after Jesus came into Jerusalem um, at his glorious uh, appearing um, or his, um, you know, entering in on the donkey, all of those kinds of things. Um, and what's very interesting is John, for some reason, picks up on things that often the other gospel writers don't necessarily see. Do you know what precedes this verse? You, re you remember this passage. I'm sure you do. This is the first time that Jesus is very, very publicly getting ready to say, I'm going to die. And there's a reason why I need it to die. Um, but most people 
don't recognize, I, not even the slightest bit, the verses that precede that. Who it is that he's talking to and, and what's going on. Do you guys know that? Do you recognize that? Mom, you got your Bible right there? Turn to, to John chapter 12. And I want you to look at verse... We're at 24, but we're going to back up a little bit more. We're going to look at verse 20. I want you to tell me what it says there beginning with verse 20. Can you read it? Yeah. Yeah, 20. Verse 20. Verse 20. Okay. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. So you have a group of Greeks that have come up for the festival. They're in Jerusalem, and these are Greek people. Are they Jewish? Are they Israelites? They're Greek people. And yet they have heard about this Jesus fellow. Oh, i am got to wrap it up real quick. They've heard about this Jesus fellow. And they're curious about Jesus. Who is this Jesus? What's going on with this Jesus? We've heard all of these stories. Can we set up a time where we can meet Jesus and talk to him for ourselves? And try to kind of find out a little bit more about who he is. When Philip and Andrew come to Jesus, Jesus turns to them and he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. Have you ever seen a seed that goes bad? So the seed dies, and it goes bad, and it doesn't germinate. You had one seed, and that's all there is, right? But he says, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies in the purpose, for its purpose, it produces many, many seeds. So right outside our windows over here is a great big field. Do you remember what they, what they planted there? Did they plant wheat? Did they plant soybean? Or did they plant corn? Anyone remember? It's corn, and it's really big. This is the tallest I've seen the corn in a number of years. We've planted corn every single year for the last 12 years or something, with the exception of this past year. You guys would often, you know, help with the planting of that corn. When you would plant the corn, what would you have in your hand that you would put into the ground? One kernel, one piece of corn considered the seed, and you would plant it in the ground. How, when that stalk comes up, how many ears of corn would you say come from, that, from, from, a, from a stalk, would you say? About three? Is that right? About three? Okay, I wondered. Three, and I don't know how many kernels are actually on an ear of corn. Would it be right to say a hundred? Maybe, you think? Maybe so, maybe less? Maybe more, maybe less? I don't know. So maybe from the one, you get 300, okay? So that's pretty slick. Anyone who loves their life will lose it. Anyone who loves their life will, will lose it, will be like that seed that just doesn't, you know, just doesn't do good stuff. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while the one who hates their life in this world, boy, that's big time speech. 
but who hates, we get, we get certain other passages like, blessed are those who grieve, for they will be comforted. Um, you know, passages that go along with this, but this is, this is unique talk. But this is Jesus. Anyone who, who, uh, who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Uh, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. He goes on to say, so you, you have this image here of the seed that doesn't do anything, and then the seed that dies, that like goes into the ground, hates his life. In other words, says, you know what, I'm not going to live my life for myself. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to put my desires to death, and then instead I'm going to... Um, I'm going to live my life for the Lord. Guys, listen, it is the top of the hour, and I am not going to go over because we said we wouldn't and stuff, and we've got kids that need to go sleepy sleep. So um, we're going to pray, and then we're, I'm going to let you guys go, and we'll be dismissed and stuff, okay? Let's pray together. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this evening, and uh, thank you for our, our time together. Thank you, Lord, for the good food that we've uh, and enjoyed together and just the blessings um, that, um, just the blessings, Lord, that you, you pour upon us. Just continue to be with us and help us and lead us. Um, it is our desire, Lord, to bear much fruit. And it is our desire to know and to learn from you and from your word what it means and what it looks like to bear much fruit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.